So in this particular room, we've recorded several female voices on different cameras and different recording equipment. I had a surveillance camera mounted on a table over to my left. As Barbara Four, who was one of the owners of the inn, was talking to a couple people, a female voice comes on and says, thank you, I want you to know, or I want you to come, or something like that. So she was, it was, it's a complete sentence. Um, the last word's kind of hard to hear, but it's an anomalous voice. It's a voice of someone that was not present in the room. Now, there have been no reports of any kind of physical manifestations in this particular room. Actually, I, I don't think Barbara or Michelle Four had ever told me about anything odd happening in this room, but these, this is the room that we've recorded our best voices in. Brent and I were here with Craig filming, I believe it was May of 2005. Uh, Brent and I were having a, a conversation. We were sitting at the table right behind me getting ready to film. And we were joking around and a, a faint voice comes on and says what I believe and what Brent believes is fuck you. And this was, I think the only time we've ever recorded a male voice in this particular room. It sounds to me like it says fuck you. It's not uncommon for EVP researchers to get cursed at or threatened. It doesn't really happen that much with our group, but I've talked to other investigators and read stories about other EVP uh, researchers and, and ghost investigators that have had their lives threatened. Uh, there's been reports that a couple actually went insane. Uh, they started hearing the voices real time with their ears, and these are people that do uh, recordings in their homes. It's also important to remember that this stuff can't hurt you. Some of these entities, like real people on our plane in real life, are not the most well-balanced people, and they don't change when they go over there. So you got your, your liars, you have your abusive, nasty people, and they'll come through on your recordings from time to time. I, I find it funny. It, it, some people get pretty freaked out about it, but, you know, we've been recording for so long, and we've heard a lot of different odd stuff. I mean, recording paranormal voices is odd enough, but after you've been doing it for a while, you come, become kind of desensitized to it. So, you know, it's almost entertaining when you get these swearing voices on your recording. Barbara Four has a friend that is a psychic. And this woman's from Bucks County, uh, the general area, and she's been in here several times. The woman has felt the presence of a female in the back corner of the room where the old staircase from downstairs comes into the room and she's also felt cold spots. You know, we don't generally work with psychics but we can use the information they give us to uh, use in tandem with our physical evidence, mostly recording evidence, to kind of pinpoint and cross-reference different areas of, of interest in a building. We're in the tavern room of the Golden Pheasant Inn. This was the original entrance into the inn. Uh, everything to the right of me is an addition over the years, but this is the original uh, uh, original bar area of the inn. We've got some real low voices that really, without headphones, you're not going to hear too well. But Brent, with his Sony TV camera, as he was leaving this room and going into the current dining area, main dining room, he was just letting the camera roll. When he went back to review the footage, he was playing this one particular clip backwards, and he found that there was a male voice going backwards that was not there going forwards. We find these reverse phantom voices quite by accident. Again, Brent was just dragging the timeline to get back to a starting point of the file, and then he heard this voice come on. And since then, he's found other voices going backwards um, while he's editing. So it's not, unless we want to sit and, and listen to hours and hours of video and audio footage forward and reverse, going one way is just completely utterly time-consuming, but to do both is just not practical. The story Barbara got from her guest was it was about 1, 2 in the morning, and she heard a female and two males laughing down here, joking around, sounding like they're having a party, and it went on for hours and hours. It was actually keeping him, this gentleman, up. And about 6 in the morning, he says he, he this room doesn't have a bathroom. He shares a bathroom down the hall with another room. He got up to go to, to use the restroom. And when he came out, the stair, uh, around the top of the stairs, he didn't hear anything from down here. And he used the bathroom and he went back to his room and it stopped. And that happens a lot in haunting cases where, you know, a human being will enter into an area where something is going on and it just seems to quell it completely. We're in room three on the second floor of the Golden Pheasant Inn. 
all five bedrooms up here were inhabited by the four five daughters at one point, and they're all grown and moved out. But this was Brittany's room. And Brittany's one of Barbara and, and Michelle's daughters, and she has experienced on several different occasions physical phenomena in this room, you know, back in the 80s and early 90s when she lived here. One t uh, story she told me about was she came out of the bathroom uh, in front of me and was looking at a bunch of bottles and other knickknacks on her dresser and a couple of the bottles and knickknacks slid across the dresser top. She said she did, that happened to her on a couple different occasions in this room. She also said uh, on one, one event when that happened, uh, her and one of her other sisters went out to a restaurant afterwards later that day and had the salt shakers start moving around on the table, which was odd because that's more poltergeist phenomena than actual ghost phenomena. But who, you know, who knows? Uh, it's hard to say exactly what was going on. But this was the stories that they told me. And this was the original bedroom for the innkeepers back in the 19th century. Uh, this is where they stayed. Again, there were not really any rooms rented here for the canal and bargemen coming up and down the canal. Uh, but they could stay downstairs and eat. This was all family area upstairs on the second floor. My feeling about this place is it's definitely haunted. It's got the human element. It's been occupied for close to 200 years. Um, it's got the emotional element. People have been married here, died here. Um, from the 1830s to the 1930s, it was used as a main stop on the canal, which is right out and back, to all the bargemen. Um, they stayed here. Um, they drank here. They spent Christmases here uh, with each other or by themselves. So, and you also, you have the um, water element as well, which, you know, on both sides of this inn is surrounded by water, and no one's been able to prove why or what role water plays in haunting phenomena, but the evidence has shown over the past hundred years that, you know, places that are around or surrounded by water tend to have more haunting phenomena. So you've got all these factors coming together um, that contribute to the haunting phenomena here. In, um, that's not going to change anytime soon. The great thing about the Golden Pheasant it is a B&B. Um, it's shut down a couple days a week and also it has guests overnight and it's very, very quiet around here, especially at nighttime. The inn is locked up. So, I mean, as long as people come and continue to spend, you know, long weekends and vacations here, uh, especially in the overnight hours when the, when the inn is relatively empty and very quiet, you know, we're very confident that we'll continue to get reports of haunting activity, especially on the first and second floors.